I'm Monroe. And I'm Cassidy. This week on RJTV, we take a look at our prestigious speech and debate program, Wrestling Season Hype, and Leighton Hall with Live Witness News. That and more this week on RJTV. Start things off. Can Creators, I'm Monroe. And I'm Cassidy. This week on RJTV, we take a look at our prestigious speech and debate program, Wrestling Season Hype, and Leighton Hall with Live Witness News. That and more this week on RJTV. Start things off. Can Good morning, Raiders. I'm Miles Fortique. And I'm Tierney Dickinson. Th Test, test, testing, testing. Test, test, test.
Good evening and welcome to Family Sports Center. Tonight brings us another top 10 matchup. It's the Regis Jesuit Raiders at number 6 and Monarch at number 3. We welcome you here once again to Family Sports Center. My name is Jake Stewart and alongside me all night long is my good friend and color commentator Hudson Ridley. Hudson, what can you tell me about the Raiders tonight? Well, the Raiders are led by a decent scoring attack. No players are really the, the stars of this team, but I would have to say if I were to watch one player, um, I would say Leighton Walsh. The Raiders are hungry because they haven't had as great of a start, a, a season, excuse me, as they did last season. Nearly going undefeated last season. This season starting out 5-2-1. and one. So they're going to look to get behind Leighton Walsh, just put the pedal to the metal, and try to win this big top 10 ranked matchup. So we look at the journey. First is the Regis Jesuit Raiders. They open the season on a 5-1 to one win over Mountain Vista. They beat them once again on Teddy Bear Night, 8-4. to four. The marquee wins this season include knocking off two top five teams in Chaparral and Heritage. And the losses came to number five, Denver East, and number 12, Cherry Creek Hudson. We tied them most recently last week as well, so in overtime. So, so two great matchups against Cherry Creek to, to open the year and, and a tough loss to Denver East. But this team is coming off an 18-1 season last season, and, and they haven't lost an away game yet so far. Far. So, so what do you make of this game tonight? I mean, it's obviously it's a big game for both of these teams, both Monarch and Regis. Yeah, I mean, it's a top 10 matchup. And if you're either team, you know you have to win this game to hold on to the position you're in. Both teams are 5-2-1, and one, the same record, so something's got to break. Look for every team to give it their all in this top 10 matchup because it's going to be very, very important who comes out on top here in the end. You talked already about Leighton Walsh leading the team with seven goals and three assists. His counterpart, Nolan Sargent, has put up two goals to go along with nine assists. The Raiders, five of their eight games have been within one goal. Both losses were by one. Look for this game to be close. And Hudson, as we move over to this Monarch side, five, two, and one, just like the Raiders, five wins. Uh, two losses and one tie. They're ranked number three in the state of Colorado. They started off the season hot with four statement wins, outscoring opponents 29-3. to three. Yeah, I mean, this... Uh, this attack doesn't really have a lot of stars on it, uh, similar to the uh, Raiders attack, but they do have a lot of good team play. Drew Fur leads this team with six goals, one assist, a high-powered offense, especially in those first four games, scoring 29 goals, as you mentioned, in those first four. Look for them to try to come out flying here. The Coyotes are 1-2-1 and, two and one in their last four, but played high-caliber teams, including number 9, Valor, number 12, Creek, number 2, Ralston Valley, and number 3, Fort Collins. This team is built differently than teams like Mountain Vista, as you've seen twice this year. They have six different players with five or more points, including, including two with double digits. That's Caleb Gold leading the team with 12 points on seven goals and five assists. You talk about Drew Fur, Hudson, six goals through eight games, and Sam Ziss as well, two goals and eight assists. So three players that can step up at any moment, they counteract. Nolan Sargent and Leighton Walsh on the other side. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, this is a, a great scoring matchup of good team hockey tonight. Expect a great game, top 10 ranked matchup. So thanks for tuning in so far. When we come back, we'll have the blast to the pass. Stay with us. We'll be back. Raiders, I'm Monroe. And I'm Cassidy. This week on RJTV, we take a look at our prestigious speech and debate program, Wrestling Season Hype, and Leighton Hall with Live Witness News. That and more this week on RJTV. To start things off, Good morning, Raiders. I'm Miles Fortique. And I'm Tierney Dickinson. This week on RJTV, a deep dive into the Key Club, a day in the life of Mike and Sam. And Dr. Osterkamp on Between Two Freshmen. That and more this week on RJTV.
To start things off, mom prom tickets go on sale today. The theme is 1920s flappers and fedoras. Guys, be sure to get your tickets on the Regis website and in the link in this Friday's Red and White. Over the next two weeks, we will be collecting gently used and new books for children of all ages in the local community. Please donate by placing the books in the collection bins at the entrance of both buildings. And in the spirit of giving, we will be taking a look at one of Regis's most generous service clubs. Our key club. Here's Skylar Kane and Charlotte Layden with more. The Key Club visited St. Michael Parish Preschool to help out kids less fortunate in a fall festival. Let's see how that goes. So my name is Jake Stewart. I'm a senior here. And my name is Ali Barnes, and I'm a senior, and I'm the vice president of Key Club. Hi, my name is Bridget Sargent, and I'm a senior, and I'm the secretary of Key Club. So I joined the Key Club because uh, Ms. Kabadi had told me, hey, this is a club that might interest you, it might interest you doing service. And it really helps with like college applications. It's nationwide, so a lot of colleges know about it. But once I started, I absolutely loved it. And uh, the idea of you know putting a smile on somebody's face and making their day was awesome to me because you know sometimes there's people out there that really, really need help, and so it's great to be that helping hand. It's worth it to like go to the meetings or like miss a little bit of your academic support or pick your Saturday to go do service. It's obvious to see the Key Club is taking the time to put a smile on children's faces one by one. If you want to get involved, you can just talk to Ms. Kabadi or Jake Stewart about getting put on the email list and then um, they'll just send out emails when the meetings are and then you come to the meetings and figure out what service sites you want to go to. It's so fun. This is Charlotte Layden and Skylar Kane for RJTV. Thanks, Skylar and Charlotte. Miles, we've got a treat this week. What? Welcome back here on the Raider Sports Network. Jake Stewart, Hudson Ridley with you. It's a blast for the past time. Tonight is the first matchup between these two teams this year. Hudson, back in 2016, my freshman year, the Raiders stunned the unbeaten Coyotes, who had scored 202 goals under only surrendering 19 goals to win the championship. Why don't you tell me a little about 2017? I mean, 2017 Monarch, however, did get their revenge, upsetting the Raiders 2-1 to one to win their first state championship after four straight losses in the big game. So you know these two teams got a little bad blood for each other. They don't, they don't love to play against each other, but you know it's a fun time. Every time they do, this is a matchup, once again, of the number three Coyotes of Monarch and the number six Raiders from Regis Jesuit. When we, be, when we come back in just a second, we'll talk about who's behind the net and get you set with the starting lineups. We'll be back next.
Welcome back on the Raiders Sports Network. It's time to get you set with the starting lineups tonight. We'll start with the net minders for the Regis Jesuit Raiders. It's Gage Bussey. Bussey's been phenomenal with a 3-1-1 one one record and a 94.4 save percentage on 100, 107 shots. Now Hudson, his counterpart, Logan Slot, has been pretty solid as well with a 2-1 and one record and an 85.7 save percentage in relief of Bussey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zlot's only a sophomore, but he's got a lot of time to learn. He's showing a lot of potential. Look for him a lot in the future. Both of them have been very solid netminders thus far this season. We look to the other side, and we look no further behind the net than Ethan Blackburn. He highlights the team with a 3-2-1 record, a 91.4 save percentage on an astonishing 140 shots. I mean, 140 shots. That's absolutely insane. I mean, to take that many shots, let in so few goals. He's been a rock back there all season long. Look for the Raiders to try to crack him, but that's going to be pretty hard. For the Raiders, once again, Leighton Walsh leads the team with seven goals and three assists. Well, no one's sergeant. The other senior has put up two goals with nine assists. Hudson, we've talked about it already. Plenty on the broadcast. Fifteen seniors lost this season for the Raiders. you got to have the youth stepping up, and so far they've done just that. Yeah, they're really looking for those youthful leaders. But thus far, I mean, you didn't think the season was going to go as well as last season. No one expected that. But the Raiders are doing their best to keep up with last season, and they're not doing so bad thus far. We talk about another consistency key to the game for Regis Jesuit you got to stay consistent. you got to be able to work your offense. And one of the other big things is special teams. you got to be able to limit the penalties and score on the power play as well, particularly limiting penalties, Hudson. We talked about it. 38 on the season through six games. They've done a better job the last two games, but still over 50 penalties so far this season. Yeah, I mean, those are discipline problems that you have to fix. You can't be giving teams free advantages. I mean, it's absolutely insane. 50 penalties. It is. They are getting better for sure and not getting as many penalties but you still got to stay disciplined. You go over to the Monarch side of things, a very balanced team, Hudson. You have six different players with five or more points, starting with Caleb Gold, who leads the team with 12 points on seven goals and five assists. He is counteracted by Drew Fire with six goals through eight games, and Sam Ziz, two goals and eight assists as well. This is a team not afraid to score, not afraid to shoot the puck. They've done well to start the season. They're trying to get a little bit momentum back as well. they got a tough schedule now with upcoming teams. Yeah, I mean, ranked third in the state right now. Going to be a pretty tough upcoming schedule, but thus far they've showed us that they could probably handle it. Ranked uh, number third, as we mentioned, with a 5-2-1 and one record. So after a little bit of a delay here at Family Sports Center, we saw some figure skaters out here before the hockey's going, getting going. We'll be back with two minutes in the start of this one. Game start is at 5.50. We'll be back in just a moment with the start of this one starting lineups, and we'll get you all ready to go for tonight. We'll be back in just a second.
Once again, welcome back here on Family Sports Center. It's time to get you set with the starting lineups here. First off, it's Monarch. It's number four, Braden Nig. Number nine, Drew Fire. Six goals and one assist for him. Number 15, that's Henry Zygert. Zygert scoreless to start this one. Number 18 out there now, Liam Kelly. He's got an assist on the season. There's number 20, Hunter Hopkins. Two goals to go along with six assists for this team. There's number 22, Andrew Kim. Four points on the season. And finally in net, number 30, Ethan Blackburn. So here come the Raiders, the starting lineup tonight for the Raiders to be announced now. They're the home team tonight. Nolan Sargent, the defenseman and captain of this team. Number eight, the first to be announced here. He's got 10 points, 11 points on this season. Next is number 14 for the Raiders. Dylan Thompson, my good friend. He's got an assist on the season. Very bright young player. Number 15 up next, Leighton Walsh, the leading goal scorer on this team. Next up is defenseman for the Raiders, number 19, sophomore William Laws. And next up for the Raiders is number 20, Hero Schmidt. And in goal for the Raiders, number 29, Gage Bussey. Here's the national anthem for you. It's face-off time here at Family Sports Center. Number three ranked Monarch Coyotes and the number six ranked Regis Jesuit Raiders. Identical records coming into this one. Hudson, five wins, two losses, and one tie for both teams. Yeah, both these teams gotten off to a pretty decent start this season. This is a top ten ranked matchup. Monarch coming in at number three. The Raiders ranked number six. Once again, Raiders have to limit the penalties coming into this one. Stay consistent, especially on the defensive end. It's been good all season long. Got to play good special teams. Yeah, you definitely have to. And limiting those penalties, as you mentioned, a big, big factor. You can't give them a man advantage, excuse me, on the ice. So here we go. Let's get started tonight. The Raiders looking for another win. They're coming off of a tie in overtime against number 12 ranked Cherry Creek Bruins. Taking the face off for the Raiders tonight. Number 15, Leighton Walsh. The Raiders winning the face off, and it goes straight to Nolan Sargent, the captain. Along the end boards now. Raiders trying to come up with this one. But it's won by the Coyotes, taken right back by the Raiders. Here comes the Raiders. And an early whistle there, Hudson. Yeah. Looks like offsides. Being offsides there. Just wasn't on the same page with this teammate skated into the zone too early. That's coming back out. So a face-off now just outside of the blue line for the Raiders and the Coyotes tonight. 14 seconds into this one. The score still 0-0. Leighton Wash will be doing the face-offs tonight for the majority of the game for the Raiders. He's a key player to watch. A senior leader. He stepped up with a loss of 15 seniors. Sargent with it now. The defenseman. Risky pass back into his zone. Monarch now trying to set up some sort of offense. Kept in along the inboards now. 
Back towards Sargent. Sargent makes one move. Pass it off there. Tries to find Dylan Thompson. Cannot. No icing called on the Raiders. But here comes Monarch back the other way. Steal once again by the Raiders. That's number two with it. Adam Prax. Cross ice pass there. The Raiders getting it into the zone now. Both teams evenly matched here tonight. Same records as that one goes through the legs. Here comes Monarch now. Shots deflected there. That was number four for Monarch. Brandon Nig. Here comes the Raiders into the zone. Shot just wide of the net. For the Raiders, that was number five. Robbie Dembeck. Dembeck had a goal last game as well as in the teddy bear toss. He's got one goal to go along with two assists this season. It's John Axton with it now for the Raiders. Here's Logan's lot. Caleb Blatt now, one of the many seniors of this team. Back and forth game so far in this one. Raiders need some more energy, Hudson. Yeah, they certainly do. One shot on goal to Monarch zero. Along the boards now, both teams fighting for that puck. The Raiders coming away with it for a second there, but it's back to Monarch. Monarch pressing on here, tries to get a shot, they do. Big save there. Puck still out in front, shot. Another save there by Bussy. Monarch on that possession just tried to pound it in, could not do so, and back the other way comes Caleb Blatbat icing called there. Yeah, on that last possession for Monarch, trying to pound that into the net, they just couldn't get it, had multiple rebounds, but the Raiders did a good job securing that puck, clearing it out of the zone. Good defense there by the Raiders. So back into the Raiders' zone once again. Hudson, we already talked about the key scores, but we'll tell you once again, Sam Ziss for Monarch, two goals along with eight assists. Caleb Gold, seven goals and five assists. He's been pretty, pretty goal, I'll say, myself tonight. Raiders trying to win it back here, and they do. But it's right back to Monarch. A little bit of an errant pass there. You cannot have those tonight against the number three ranked Monarch team. Opportunity now for Monarch. That one sent out of the zone. Black bat pushing hard. So far, both teams doing a good job of passing. That's number 10 for the Raiders. Ooh. Andrew Gleason. And that one smothered up there by goaltender Ethan Blackburn. Yeah, Ethan Blackburn has been a rock back there in net making a pretty routine stop and save there, covering the puck. But he's been a rock back there thus far. Look for the Raiders to try to crack him. That won't be an easy task. So we see a line change now for the Raiders. It's Sergio Padilla along with Kai Oganeku out there now. That one's sent along the boards there. Back for Monarch in their own zone now. They're doing a good job of possessing thus far. Steered ahead, that's Fuller loose. Opportunity out in front there, steered wide, that's Leighton Walsh with it. Walsh lost it there, back the other way comes Monarch. Okaneku, pass it up, big hit there by Monarch, out in front, shot, Ooh. save. So a nice possession there for the Raiders. First it was number 15, Leighton Walsh taking a hit and then an opportunity out in front of the goaltender, Hudson. Yeah, and a nice dish gave the opportunity for a good shot, but Blackburn making that glove save. He's been spectacular, I've mentioned back there. I mean, this is going to be a tough challenge for the Raiders, but as we've seen thus far this season, they've been pretty good at getting shots on net, getting some goals, so let's see if they can do it here tonight. So here comes the number one line for the Raiders after a power play was called there. So the Raiders on the power play now, two minutes off of the Monarch penalty. The number one line out there now, it's Walsh, Sergeant Dembeck for the Raiders. To go along with Padilla and Balatbat. 
That one steered wide and out of the zone by Monarch. That's the recipe for ending these power plays and hopefully getting a shorthanded goal. If you're Monarch Hudson, you got to be able to work quickly and get that puck out of the zone. Mm -hmm. Raiders with a good chance here. There's Blackbat working it out of front. Shot. Save there. Whistle blown. Ethan Blackburn, another nice save. That was a pad save there. While we have this stoppage, we'd like to remind you that both these teams are 5-2-1, and one, so something has got to break here in this game. That's right. Once again, a top-10 matchup between these two teams. The Raiders coming in at number six in the state of Colorado and Monarch at number three. That one sent out once again. Back to the goaltender, Bussy. Raiders one shot so far on this power play, trying to add to that here to get the first goal of the night. Here's Walsh. Lost it for a second there, but got it back. Here's Leighton Walsh, the Raiders leading goaltender. Falls down there, whistle blown. And another penalty looks like it will be called here. Looks like slashing on Monarch. So Hudson, the Raiders will now go on a five on three here. And a big opportunity to give you the first goal. So two players now in the box for Monarch. The Raiders have a minute and three seconds of five on three action here at Family Sports Center. Got to get on the board here, Hudson. Yeah, you certainly do. I mean, you have to take advantage of your situation. Monarch just trying to kill some penalty time here. Raiders working it out here. Here come the Raiders. That's number two with it, Kai Ogineku. Ogineku takes it in himself, shoots. Big save there. Oh. Oh my goodness, Hudson, he kicked that one wow. up to himself. Yeah, tipped it off his stick in the air, made the glove save. That is acrobatic. Not something you see every day, but once again, Ethan Blackburn coming into this one. 3-2-1, and 91.4 save percentage. He's already faced four shots tonight. Perfect save percentage so far tonight. So the Raiders still 30 seconds left on this 5-on-3. Working it around. Back up top. Yet to take a shot on this power play. It's Caden Blackbat. Blackbat. Oh. Out in front. Shot save. Steered wide shot in front. Oh my goodness, what a chance for the Raiders. Yeah, look like it, had an open goal there. Looked like it banged off a body somehow. The goaltender, Blackburn, was on the other side of the net, and Blackbat had a wide open goal there. Could not put that home. Great deflection there by Monarch to save a goal. Working in quickly there is Ogineku. Steered wide. 52 seconds left to go now on the power play for the Raiders. It's now five on four and enters Nolan Sargent and Leighton Walsh. The Raiders two leading goalers, goal scorers now on the ice. There's Nolan Sargent. Pass it off to Leighton Walsh. Walsh bring it in. Up top shot, save. Rebound, shot just wide of the net there. Raiders just under 30 seconds left to go. They're starting to press hard as that one sent out of the zone. Yeah, Raiders have been using their advantage thus far in this game. They've had a lot of good pen penalty, excuse me, advantage minutes trying to take advantage of it. So 10 seconds left to go. Raiders looking to get one more shot on before the power play ends. Here's Leighton Walsh. Walk it in. Pass it up. Shot save. Rebound out in front. Still out there. Shot score. Raiders on tap first with one second left to go on the first power play of their aim. Raiders strike first here at Family Sports Center. Yeah, just at the end of that great power play chance, they were able to get a power play goal. I mean, even though it was just at the end, they were able to get it. I mean, couldn't have come in better fashion there. It took a few chances, but the Raiders put the first one home there. Those second chance shots working out in the Raiders' favor. That one scored by number 19, William Laws, his first goal of the season, Hudson. Yeah, that's absolutely insane that they were able to get it on that power play. I didn't think they'd make it in time. Nonetheless, it will count for the power play with one second and Nolan Sargent looking to add to that. He comes in with speed, works it in. Sargent, oh. he's got Denbeck now. Denbeck, that one out of the zone. Raiders cannot keep it in. So Hudson, the Raiders strike first here, and that's just what they needed. We talked about it. Six of their eight games have come within one goal. Yeah, I mean, they, they're playing very tight games as of late. Here's number seven for the Raiders now. It's Brody Sands. 
Sands got the first goal on Teddy Bear Knight with the Pack student section trying to add to that goal tonight. Monarch trying to get it out. They cannot. Big hit taken there. It was applied by number 22 for the Raiders, Nicholas Bowers, the sophomore. Plenty of youth out here for the Raiders tonight. That puck's finally sent out of the zone there for Monarch, and they can catch their breaths for a second, Hudson. Yeah, cleared deep, but a dangerous pass on the other end. Taken down there is number two, Kai Ogineku for the Raiders, and an opportunity now for Monarch. Great defense is stopped there by Caleb Blatbat. Yeah, well played there by Blatbat. Shot outside. Kick save there. Still out in front. Bussy made a tough save there, Hudson. Those ones can be some of the harder ones from out. Side that zone there could sneak through a body he'll come off a stick and, and sneak right into that back of that net yeah not only but it did look like it was tipped by a Raiders player and into the pad of blood excuse me of Bussy tough save so the Raiders on their heels right now with Monarch in possession of the puck eight minutes and five seconds left to go in period number one here Raiders with a one nothing lead at Family Sports Center number nine with it now it's Sergio Padilla trying Padilla. to clear it out of the zone Finally, the Raiders get it out of the zone, but icing will be called. So the Raiders now, Hudson, get a quick chance to make a line change here, get a couple quick breaths. What do you make so far in this first period? I mean, the Raiders have taken advantage of their chances thus far, putting one goal on the board in power play situations. They have not committed any penalties yet, too, which was one of our keys to the game. Stay disciplined, and they've done that thus far. The Raiders already with six goals to the Yotes, too doing a nice job there and take it out Raiders have numbers if they decide to use it here two on two action set on front shot save that one was deflected wide there didn't have a chance to make it to the goaltender Sargent big shot kick save there the Raiders already jumping out in front in this one one to zero the score on eight shots Hudson before the game we talked about the special teams for the Raiders it had to be there if they wanted to win this one already won and one for one on the power play. Yeah, they've taken advantage of those two power play chances that they got, snagging one goal, getting on the board before the Coyotes. Sean Holloway taking it into the zone this time for the Raiders. Seven minutes left to go in period number one. Kept all on the board. This is number 19 for the Coyotes, Caleb Gold. He's the leading goal scorer of this team with seven. Icing called there. The Raiders and the Yotes having a chance to make a quick line change here. Here come the Raiders with the puck in the Coyote zone. Let's see if they can do anything with this opportunity. Now Monarch cuts in for those of you that missed the postgame show. 2016, number one team in the state of Colorado. Hadn't lost a game and the Raiders took them down in upset fashion. The year after that, 2017, the Raiders came into the championship with high hopes looking for them going to back to back and were taken down by Monarch. So some bad blood between these two teams. You know every time they play it'll be a good one and so far it's been just that tonight. Yeah, it's been a close game thus far. So here's Monarch working with it now. Trying to knock this game up at one. Sent out of the zone there. Walsh with it now. Yeah, Send good chance. Up. Opportunity now for the Raiders. They got a two-on-one. Out in front, shot, save! What a save there by Ethan Blackburn. It took all of an effort there to save that one for Blackburn on a two-on-one. Kept this team from a two-goal deficit. Yeah, what a stretched out save by Blackburn. Couldn't have made it any better. Blackbat unable to keep that one in the zone. An opportunity now for Monarch. It's number 26 with it now for Monarch. The big Kevin Masais. That was Benjamin Romero with it for the Raiders. Dylan Thompson shot, save out in front, shot, score! Did it go in? Oh my goodness, what a chance for the Raiders. Ethan Blackburn coming up big once again. Yeah, that looked in from here. He must have made a terrific save from behind that crease. Can't see it from this angle. Blackburn wanted, excuse me, 
Blackburn wanted that save, and he got it, but for Dylan Thompson, he wanted that far post, couldn't get it, but the rebound was there for the Raiders, couldn't put it home. Hudson, I think that second attacker for the Raiders thought it had already gone in. Yeah, I, I think he did too. I mean, there was for him, there's no need to get the rebound if it's already in, but you just got to make sure that's still in. If it's in, you even if it's not in, you still got to keep poking at that trying to get that goal, get that two-goal advantage. Raiders looking for another crack at it here. Another opportunity after a miscue for Monarch. They send that one out of the zone. Raiders with a good advantage here. Toby Yarrington. Monarch takes that one away. Trying to get some sort of spark in this one is Monarch. It's been all the Raiders so far in this one. Out shooting Monarch by eight so far. Kyle Ganeku takes a hit there. Coyotes win that one out in front. Glove save there by Gage Bus. Yeah, it seems like the puck took a little deflection on its way to the net. Good job by Bussy to locate that. Put the glove on top of it. So another face-off here in the Raiders zone. A good defensive start to this one for the Raiders Hudson. They haven't allowed much on their side of things. Yeah. I mean, they've been pretty locked down thus far. Bussy's doing a great job in net. Look for that to continue. The Raiders, a very good defensive team. Sargent trying to win this one. Does a good job of getting the body square that time. The Monarch's still with it now. Sargent, nice hit there. Uses the big body. Once again, Raiders coming out of it with the puck. Trying to get it out of the zone, though. They can't. Now they will. Trying to get a line change. They'll get a few guys off here. Number five hustling in for the Raiders, Robbie Denbeck. But icing called on that one. Yeah, this puck is coming back the other way. Face-off in the Raiders' third here. The Raiders, as we mentioned, a good defense team led by the big senior defenseman captain, Nolan Sargent. This Monarch team getting accustomed to playing. Very strong teams here as of late between Valor and Creek, and now Regis Jesuit to say of just a few. Mm -hmm. They also played Ralston Valley, the number two ranked team in the state. They lost to them. They tied number three ranked Fort Collins and lost to Valor. They did beat Creek, though, a team that beat the Raiders once and tied them just recently. Hudson. Yeah, they seem to be a better team than their record suggests. Raiders with an opportunity here trying to add to that one goal lead. Great job to keep that one in the zone. Backhanded shot there set just above the net. Nice shot. Nearly pinpointed that into the top right corner. So three minutes left to go here. Nolan Sargent doing a great job of keeping that one in the zone. We're just trying to win it along the end boards here. Monarch trying to get some passing going. It's been struggling as of late. This is a bigger team, Hudson, led by several seniors. Mm -hmm. Something that the Raiders does not do not have a lot of. Yeah, the Raiders lack experience, but they're playing well with the youth that they have. That one blocked away there by the Raiders. Coming back the other way, a nice pass, a penalty upcoming on Monarch. Raiders trying to capitalize, shot, save, kick save there by Blackburn. Doesn't look like they were going to call that penalty, but a ferocious hit. Open ice. Sure to me. Look like a penalty there, uh, some sort of roughing call there, but nothing warranted there. Two minutes, 15 seconds left to go in period number one. Raiders on top with a score of one to one to nothing. Yeah, and certainly trying to tack another one on here. I mean, that would be huge going into the locker room after the first period. The pressure's been insurmountable so far for the away team in Monarch. The Raiders doing a good job of putting the pressure on all game long. That one deflected wide there. It was John Axton, the sophomore. For Monarch cuts, and all they need is one shot to find the back of the net, and things get knotted up here in a game that so far Regis has just dominated thus far. Yeah, and we saw there on the boards a very funny play there. Um, Monarch player trying to land a massive hit. Ben Romero, uh, sophomore for Regis, just spinning out of that one. Several hits out there for both teams. Tommy Miner, one of the Raiders out tonight, is that one to flex off a Raiders player. John Axton trying to keep that one in, cannot. Monarch with the chance now, backhanded pass, shot, save. Great save there by Gage Bussey. 
Yeah, a lot of misdirection. Tried to get the one-timer there off the backhand pass. One minute remaining in the period. Shot score! Monarch with 58 seconds left to go. Knocks things up at one here. Family Sports Center, Hudson. You knew it wouldn't be long before things were all tied up here. Yeah, a lot of pressure was being put on that net there. It was only a matter of time before the defense cracked. Scoring that one for Monarch. That's number eight, Adam MacArthur. His second goal of the season to go along with three assists. So Hudson, in a, in a period that the Raiders so far have seen the dominant team, the score, though, reflects one-to-one. -one. So evenly matched right now, though it appears the Raiders had a little bit of shooting advantage. We saw a five-on-three earlier in this one. The Raiders did capitalize on the power play. Yeah, more shots. Goal. Same amount of goals, though. That one sent up high. A tricky play there for the Raiders, but a glove save by Bussy. Type of baseball play there. High pop fly, if you will. Right into the glove of Bussy. Good save there. Way to locate the puck. Speaking of baseball, the Raiders back, looking to be back-to-back -back champions for the first time in history. They're, they're one just this past year. They got rings to show for it and coming into this season with a fresh start. Plenty of seniors to go around looking at Owen Best and Jacob Thompson to lead that team along with Bryce Parsons. So Monarch with a little bit of momentum now. The Raiders trying to gain some back. Working back the other way. 30 seconds left to go in period number one. Taking it in his zone now is Sergio Padilla. Tries to send one into the middle there. No Raiders player for it. Monarch struggles to get it out of his zone now. Ogunaku works it in. 15 seconds left to go here. Clock approaching. Five seconds opportunity now. Leighton Walsh coming away with it. Five seconds left to go here for the Raiders. Final two seconds shot there. Deflected wide. So at the end of the period, the first period here at Family Sports Center, the number one, uh, number three, excuse me, ranked Monarch Coyotes and number number six ranked Regis Jesuit Raiders all matted up at one. We'll be back with some input here at the end of the first period. We'll be back next. Good morning, Raiders. I'm Miles Fortique. And I'm Tierney Dickinson. This week on RJTV, a deep dive into the Key Club, a day in the life of Mike and Sam. And Dr. Osterkamp on Between Two Freshmen. That and more this week on RJTV. To start things off, Mom Prom tickets go on sale today. The theme is 1920s Flappers and Fedoras. Guys, be sure to get your tickets on the Regis website and in the link in this Friday's Red and White. Over the next two weeks, we will be collecting gently used and new books for children of all ages in the local community. Please donate by placing the books in the collection bins at the entrance of both buildings. And in the spirit of giving, we will be taking a look at one of Regis's most generous service clubs. Our key club. Here's Skylar Kane and Charlotte Layden with more. The key club visited St. Michael Parish Preschool to help out kids less fortunate in a fall festival. Let's see how that goes. So my name is Jake Steer. I'm a senior here. My name is Ali Barnes, and I'm a senior, and I'm the Vice President of Key Club. Hi, my name is Bridget Sargent, and I'm a senior, and I'm the Secretary of Key Club. So I joined the Key Club because uh, Ms. Kabadi had told me, hey, this is a club that might interest you, it might interest you doing service. And it really helps with like college applications. It's nationwide, so a lot of colleges know about it. But once I started, I absolutely loved it, and uh, the idea of you know putting a smile on somebody's face and making it it was awesome to me because you know sometimes there's people out there that really need really help and so it's great to be that helping hand. It's worth it to like go to the meetings or like miss a little bit of your academic support or pick your Saturday to go do service. It's obvious to see the Key Club is taking the time to put a smile on children's faces one by one. If you want to get involved, you can just talk to Miss Kabadi or Jake Stewart about getting put on the email list and then um, they'll just send out emails when the meetings are and then you come to the meetings and figure out what service sites you want to go to. It's so fun. This is Charlotte Layden and Skylar Kane for RJTV. 
Thanks, Skylar and Charlotte. Miles, we've got a treat this week. What's that, Tierney? <laughs> Michael Manukian makes his triumphant return to RJ Media with Sam Stern. Oh boy, here's Sam Stern and Mike Manoogs with the life of Mike and Sam. Welcome to the life of Mike and Sam, starring Michael Manoogian and Sam Stern. It's, it's such a pleasure to be here. Sam. It's been, uh, what, three years since yeah. we've been on the mic together? Too long. Too, too long. long. Yeah. Got to talk to people about this whole flag football refing thing. It, it, yeah. This is one of the funniest things I've ever wow. heard in my life. Yeah, you know, David Fisher and I, we go out, referee a flag football game. Right after the game, uh, you know, it ends. Supervisor comes up to us, invites us to go to nationals. Yeah. Um, unreal yeah. experience. The guy coming up to us, I just didn't really know how to react yeah. to that. So paid trip out to Florida. I get on to play by play, and I see this number. What number were you? It's a twenty uh, five. Twenty five, but number one actually, in my heart. Twenty four. Yeah. But, <laughs> but I, uh, Idol Bryce Parsons. He was yeah. really who I looked up to yeah. all summer. He showed me, you know, how to do it, how to yeah. do it right, how to get to the gym. If you know Bryce, he needs you in the gym every day, twice a day. Yeah. So I just looked up to Bryce, and you know, eventually was better than him. Had more interceptions than him. Experience. Men and women with and for others. That right? is yes. That's Sam Stern, Michael Manugian. See you later. Thanks, Mike and Sam. That was interesting. Because. You just heard our past and present RSN voices. It's got me thinking about Raiders sports. That's right, Miles. First up, your league-leading varsity hockey plays today at Family Sports Center at 540 versus Monarch. Sports stuff. <laughs> Boys and girls basketball play Tuesday. Girls play at home at 7 against Thunder Ridge. And at the same time, boys will be playing away at and against Heritage. Your sixth-ranked girls and swim and dive team have a meet Thursday at 4 in the bubble. Cheer in their first meet since placing 5th at State. Compete Tuesday at 6 against Thunder Ridge. And finally, congrats to junior Antonio Segura who placed 8th at their California Invitational Wrestling Competition last week. To end today properly, we have another awkward rabble feature. Will Cassidy sat down with Dr. Osterkamp in between two freshmen. Take a look. Hello and welcome to Between Two Freshmen. I'm Will Cassidy and today I'm following in the footsteps of the New York Times, the British Broadcasting Corporation, and President Obama. Today I'm joined by Dr. Leanne Osterkamp. Welcome. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. You won the Presidential Medal of the Arts from Obama, but isn't your real highest achievement wrangling 12 idiots in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat? You know, sometimes I like to think that. Um, I, I, I kind of consider them at about on the same footing. Uh, when are we going to see a collaboration between you and Paradox, Mr. Klassen? Ooh, you know, I think I think I just need his email. I'm not really sure about his email. I'm not really the Miss, miss Technology, so uh, give me that email and I'll, I'll see what can happen. I think it's klassenm at regisjesuit.com. Okay, I'm coming for you. You graduated Juilliard and could have taught at any East Coast prep school. Why choose Regis? You know, I actually was teaching at Juilliard for five, six years, uh, and I just really loved the idea of teaching high school, believe it or not. Um, when I was a youngin like you, I actually thought I would hate teaching high school, but uh, it became my passion, and I really loved Regis and the community, so I uh, got myself in a U-Haul and moved across country. Yep. I think I'm having a heart attack. Someone get him a doctor. Is there any doctor? Sing, sing a lot. Sing, Keep the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, needed a doctor there. Thank you for joining me today. Um, be sure to catch The Wizard of Oz here on Spotify, Apple Music, and SoundCloud. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thanks, Will. You're welcome, Miles. <laughs> I'm Miles Fortique. Keep it respectful, Raiders. And I'm Tierney Dickinson. And in honor of Monday's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I leave you with this. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice.
Welcome back on the Raiders Sports Network. It's second period, face off. Hudson, we didn't have much of a chance to give a little recap of the first period, but what do you make of that first period for these two teams? Both teams putting a goal on the board, nodding the game up. Raiders taking an advantage of their power play opportunities. Monarch, on the other hand, did not have any power play opportunities. The Raiders stayed clean in that half, but they did force one into the back of the net. So an opening icing call there. One to one the score. Yep, tight game thus far. The Raiders have had more shots on goal, but as you can see by the scoreboard, all knotted up thus far. Raiders win that face off. Hudson, I gotta say, the Raiders look like they dominated that first period for the most part, not only in shots, but in time of possession. But ultimately, ultimately, it's a 1-1 game. Yeah, they did look like the better team in that half. Staying more disciplined than the Coyotes did. Looks like they're going to have a tripping call on that one. And already, that is Monarch's third penalty of the game. He's going to the box. So the Raiders are going to go on the power play. Dilly Dilly here at Family Sports Center. Trying to take the lead here and move things to 2-1. to one. That's in the first goal for the Raiders, scored by William Laws. It was his first of the season for Monarch. The first goal was scored by Adam MacArthur, his second. So here we go. It's a big line out for the Raiders right now, led by Nolan Sargent and Leighton Walsh. Sargent wins that one. Kept in along the boards. Monarch wants to get it out as soon as possible, if they can. But Leighton Walsh behind the net there, swings it over. Back to Walsh. Sargent swings that one back to Sargent once again. Raiders doing a good job of passing here. Save there. Unable to cover that one up though. Still an opportunity for the Raiders with this same line out. Shot sent wide there. Hudson kept in the kept in the zone once again. They're starting to tire out this Monarch defense. Yeah, they sure are forcing them to keep it in the zone. A nice shot there. Could have landed to the back of the net. Just couldn't get enough on it. Behind the net now, another opportunity. Swing it over to Sargent. Sargent working it around. Nothing working for Sargent. 53 seconds left to go on the power play. Tries to get it to William Laws. Laws looking for his second of the game, and that one forced out. Only 40 seconds left on this power play. Raiders trying to take advantage of this good power play opportunity. Sargent comes back from the defensive position. Swing it over William Laws. Save there. Got denied there and robbed of his second goal, Hudson. Sounded like a stick save there by the clank of the wood. 20 seconds left to go on this third power play of the game for the Raiders. Swing it over. Nolan Sargent shot there. Kicked. Blocked there. 10 seconds left to go now. That one forced out of the zone. And here comes the shorthanded Coyotes. Work it in. Power play comes to an end now. With the Raiders now controlling the puck. Nolan Sargent sending that one along. You gotta think they're gonna pull Sargent out here in a minute. Hudson, he's been on for almost four minutes. Yeah, he has. He's getting a little worn out out there, but the big man, the captain, staying tough there on that back line. So here's the Raiders back with it now. Nice deflection there by Monarch to win it back. That's number 26 for Monarch, Kevin Masias. Sargent laying a big hit on there. Sergeant, nice defense for the Raiders. He can do it at multiple levels. Hudson, this this year has kind of changed up his game a little bit. Last year he was more of a somebody sets it up for him and he puts it home and type of player. He had a lot of goals to start the season at this point especially. But this year he's been more of an assisting player. He comes from that defensive end, tries to find open players, keeps those eyes up, tries to start some plays and yeah. score some goals. Yeah, I mean, eight assists. He's the captain of this team. He's an amazing team player, always looking to find open players to put the puck in the back of the net. So here's the Raiders back with it here. Forcing that one back in the zone.
cleared back out now. Playing a little hot potato between these two teams. 12, 47 left to go here in the second period of action. One to one, still the score at Family Sports Center. Hudson, the Raiders are very accustomed to playing close games. We talked about it already. 80% of their games coming within one goal. So far, it's looking like that could be another game tonight. Yeah, they're playing incredibly close here. One, one, no team seeming to have the advantage. That one shot just wide of the net there. Two players going down for the Raiders. And it looks like another penalty will be called here. Looks like that one is going to be on Monarch. Already their fourth penalty in this game if that does stand. But it looks to me like there will be no penalty out there on the ice. So the Coyotes catching a little bit of a break here. The Raiders winning that faceoff. This line led by senior Toby Yarrington. Stick save there by Bussy. Yeah, routine knock away there. Along the net. With it now is Padilla. Padilla being pressured. A little bit undersized there. He wanted a call, did not get one. Turnover there on the Raiders. That was Gleason giving it right away, but winning it right back. Pressure applied there by Yarrington and Steele. Crushed down there is the Raiders player. Big hit there. That one looked legal to me, Hudson. Yeah, bone rattling open ice hit there. Backhand shot and easy glove save for Gage Bussey. Yeah, a nice save there by Bussey. Glove side played it very nicely. So as we have a break in the action tonight, we want to talk a little bit about the Raiders Sports Network, one of the main sectors of RJ Media. Uh, along with the RJ TV, go check out their segment today. Their Friday weekly segment was up today. A very fun piece. I myself was in that one, Hudson. Very excited to see that, and it was a fun one to watch. Yeah, it certainly was. RJ TV doing a great job as always. Back and forth hockey right now. It's been fun so far tonight. Plenty of shots for both teams. One to one though. The score, only two goals to show for it. Leighton Walsh now. Out there with Sargent. Monarch wins that one. Four seniors out there now for the Raiders Hudson. They're using as much experience as they can. Yeah, they need an experienced lineup to get a goal here. Break this tie. Get a little bit of momentum back in their favor. Monarch with their big bodies. A backhanded shot there. A wrister. It was a nice one and it goes out of play. This will be a face-off in the Raiders third here. Looks like somebody jumped a little bit too early there. See if they decide to switch out one of the players. They will not, so we'll do it again here. Face-off number two in the Raiders zone. Face off one there by the Raiders in their half now, trying to clear it out. Monarch with possession, shot, what deflected, a save what a there. save by Bussy. Bussy coming up big once again for the Raiders. He's had to stand tall and stand mighty in this second period of action. Shots all knotted up at three in this period. Nice hit there by Dembeck, but Monarch with the puck nonetheless, and they're racing fast. That one shot out of play. Very high arcing shot there, going out of bounds, hitting the netting. Going to be a face-off here. Hudson, so far this seems like very even hockey, particularly in this second period. Two well-balanced and well-matched teams. You have a bigger, more experienced Monarch team, but if you're the Raiders, you've been in this spot so many times in so many years that you're just set for anything. Yeah, the Raiders using their speed to their advantage. Raiders in their own third now, sending that down the ice. Monarch going to retain that. Looking for a nice hit. Gets hit himself instead is the Raiders player. That now was Dylan Thompson for the Raiders. Big man out in front for Monarch. Couldn't get that one. Along the board now. Two players down. 
Raiders sending that one out in front, trying to get some more action in the Monarchs zone. Haven't had much of it in this second period. Cleared out there. No icing going to be called. Here are the Raiders. Big hit there on the boards. Played in for Monarch. Good chance for Monarch. Shot. Save Busey. Gage Bussey standing big in the net. What a save there. He had a big 6-5 forward attacker coming right at him, and he stood strong there, keeping the game knotted up at one. Yeah, good play there by Monarch to get the shot. Looked like they had a man advantage that time, trying to put the shot in the back of the net. Good save there. Now Hudson, that's number 26, Kevin Mycells, and he only has one game through five goals. Excuse me, one goal through five games this season, but Mycells is one of those big players that can come and hurt you at any time. Here's an opportunity for 26 on the other side. It was Toby Yarrington. That one not controlled there by Ogineku and back to the goalkeeper, Bussy. So the Raiders trying to get a little bit of momentum back here. Not so much possession nor shots after that Monarch goal. Big hit there. That was number 25 for Monarch. Jay Alford applying the pressure there. Yeah, nice open ice hit. We've seen a physical game thus far. That was an offsides call on the Raiders. Yeah, he, lines for both teams. Yeah, he couldn't quite handle that puck as it went into the zone. Teammate was a little too fast for him there. That face-off won there by Monarch. The Raiders like this line. Leighton Walsh out there. Along with Ogineku. William Laws as well. Here's Dylan Thompson with it. The sophomore. Excuse me, he's a junior. Thompson hit there along the boards. Stays a foot. Ogineku trying to play defense there. No penalty called, and there is the first call on the Raiders. So Monarch going to go to the power play to, for the first time tonight here at Family Sports Center. When we come back, we'll be taking a quick timeout on the Raiders Sports Network. Be back, back with you in just a moment. Back here on the Raiders Sports Network. Face off in the Raiders zone once again. Won by the Raiders and Nolan Sargent. Clearing that one up and out. So Hudson, the Raiders for the first time are going to have to go on the penalty kill here. Monarch's done it four times now for the Raiders. It's their first. Yeah, they've done pretty solid on the penalty kill thus far this year. That one goes high and flying. The puck looking like a saucer there. Fast moving puck tonight. As you see a player goes down for the Raiders. Lost his stick. So the Raiders playing with what looks like a five on three now. Out in front. Opportunity. Yarrington made a great defensive stop there. To get his stick on that one. Monarch moving fast here. Trying to get some shots on this power play. Working with it along the boards. Good job to keep that one in the zone. Shot steered wide there by number eight for the Raiders. That's Nolan Sargent. Yarrington trying to be there first. And Nolan Sargent clears that one up and out. So the Raiders a chance to switch lines here. The first job, the first line did a good job of clearing it out. 38 seconds left to go in power play. Number one for Monarch. Icing called there, and Hudson, you cannot have icing if you're Monarch, particularly on a power play. An opportunity now for the Raiders shorthanded in the Monarch zone. Yeah, that's going to limit your chances a lot. You have to, as, as you mentioned, make sure that you're not icing the puck. Take your time. You have that man advantage. The whistle blown on the sideline. The Monarch coach having a few words with the referee here. It looked as though they had one too many men on the ice. 34 seconds left to go in power play. Number one for Monarch.
So here's Monarch working with it once again. Raiders slap shutting that one up and out. 25 seconds left to go in the power play. Raiders doing a good job of keeping this thing not just out of their own zone, but inside the Monarch zone, Hudson. Yeah, they've done a good job thus far on this penalty kill. That one out in front, they had an open man, couldn't find him. Trying to get one last surge here is the Coyotes. Pass out in front, shot, score! That was number eight for Monarch. Adam MacArthur, his second of the game and third of the season, putting Monarch in front for the first time tonight. Two to one the score here at Family Sports Center. Yeah, coming as a power play goal there. The Raiders were doing a solid job on the power play, um, but just could not hold up there at the end. That comes with a couple seconds left. Still going to count as a power play goal, however. So two goals for both teams coming at the very conclusion of their respective power plays. Monarch capitalizing on the first of the night. The Raiders on the first of the night as well capitalized on theirs. So two power play goals between these two teams. Monarch though ahead now. Two to one with the goal coming in six minutes and 20 seconds here in the second period. The Raiders now trying to respond after two goals in a row now for Monarch. Once again this Raiders team very young if you're looking out there and saying hey this is a team I've seen win a lot of the games and I haven't seen them lose barely any games well you're right it's just a Raiders team that lost 15 seniors a team with a lot of youth trying to recover from that and they're still learning Hudson yeah they certainly are I mean some growing pains here obviously early on not as good of a season already as you had last season but this youth is starting to mature Leighton Walsh laying a huge hit there on the Monarch player you talk about the bad blood between these two teams 2016 Monarch entered with the best record in the state and was were taken down in the state championship by the Raiders then in 2017 the Raiders took down uh, I mean, excuse me Monarch took down the Raiders in an for Monarch on the one-on-one -on -one. So Monarch, after just scoring their second goal of the game, Hudson back on the power play. Yeah, you have to be careful here. You have to play with discipline. You can't let your emotions get the best of you. You have to keep making smart plays. They were not able to hold off a goal on their first shorthanded shift. Let's see if they can do it here. That was number 19, Caleb Gold. You see him out there right now. He had a huge opportunity there to go on a one-on-one. -on -one. The Raiders decided to commit the penalty. So now they'll have to go on the... The kill once again as you see Sargent getting that one up and out of the zone to start things off here. Five minutes and five seconds left to go in the second period. A period that has been dominated by Monarch after the Raiders did it in the first period. Yeah, Monarch seeming to have the advantage in this period in almost every single way. The Yotes now on their second power play working it around. Sargent. Doing a good job on defense for the Raiders. Opportunity out in front. Toby Yarrington put that in front of his goalie dangerously there, Hudson. Here come the Raiders on the shorthanded. Shot there by Dembeck was deflected wide, but Sargent has it. Out in front. Shot save. Kick save there. It was Yarrington on the shot there. Yeah, you got to retreat here quickly. Monarch having that man advantage. Great pressure there on that one by the Raiders. And Nolan Sargent forcing it out of their own zone. Yeah, well trapped, well played defensively. The Raiders playing phenomenally, actually controlling the puck here on the power play for Monarch. Shorthanded are the Raiders. Not playing like it though. 45 seconds left to go in the second power play of the night. The Raiders know that they cannot go down two goals here at Family Sports Center. Shot there, deflected wide. Yep. Still with it, though, is Monarch. The fans want a high stick here on the Raiders. They're not going to get it. Under 30 seconds now. Monarch coming away with it. Shot out in front. Nice defensive stop there from Balatbat. We're nearing 10 seconds left in this power play. Four of the five players out now for the Raiders are seniors. And that one cleared away, and that'll do it for the second power play of the night for Monarch. A great penalty kill there for the Raiders, Hudson. Yeah, the Raiders' penalty kill did a good job on their first penalty they had to kill in the beginning of it. However, a goal did result in that penalty kill. Their second penalty kill they had to have 
right here. Did a good job of it not allowing a goal. Good job being shorthanded. Even working their puck into the zone. Uh, taking a shot on net. Pretty good penalty kill. So icing call as you see the, the puck back in the zone of Monarch. The Raiders trying to knot things up. Three minutes, nine seconds left to do so. Yarrington wins that face off. That one's sent in for Sargent. Nolan Sargent out in front, shot save. Rebound, save once again, and that one out wide there. The Raiders, a big chance there, Hudson. Yeah, certainly a big chance, couldn't capitalize there. You gotta get on the scoreboard, because this keeper, excuse me, tender, it's hard to crack. Blackburn, one heck of a netminder tonight. Already 13 saves to show for it, only one goal allowed. Raiders hustle down for that one, no icing called. Yarrington along the boards. Both teams trying to come up with it, and the Raiders will do so. Nice pass out in front. Shut! Oh my goodness, what a save there from Blackburn. Heck of a no-look pass there by Romero. You know, Hudson, in hockey, sometimes you just got to use any part of the body you can, and Blackburn did just that there. Looked for a prayer and got one. Yeah, he sure did. That one sent up and out. Two minutes and eight seconds left to go, and that was a great line there for the Raiders, Hudson. Two shots in just a minute of play. Raiders, you know they're hungry. They want to knock things back up at two. Yeah, they really want to even things going into the third period. They need a momentum boost here. Once again, it's a fun one here tonight. The number three ranked Monarch Coyotes and the number six ranked Regis Jesuit Raiders. Even records coming into this one, but somebody's got to give. Two minutes left to go here in the second period. The Raiders fighting hard here to even things up. It's Dylan Thompson. Out of the Raiders zone now. Here comes Leighton Walsh. Walsh works it in. Pass out in front. It was a beauty. Dylan Thompson couldn't put it in though. Yeah, he was looking for that one timer there. Wasn't able to get it. Nice pass, Harvard. Massive hit laid on the boards there. That was Sergio Padilla and Hudson. I gotta say in these four years since I've been a Raider, it's Padilla taking the most hits. You see him flying around the ice. And here's an opportunity for Monarch. They have a three on one now. Out in front, one on one with the goalie shot. What a save there. Gage Bussy comes up huge for the Raiders and keeps it. A one goal laid here at Family Sports Center. Yeah, had Monarch had a one on one there. Bussy standing tall in his net, saving that puck. Great job to stop a three on one getting back and then a one on one with the goalkeeper there. Great job there by the Raiders defense. That's just simply a netminder stepping up against the number one goal scorer here for Monarch. Coming up huge. He's three one and one on the season, 107 saves and showed every single piece of it on that one. The Raiders still a minute now to possibly score a goal. Monarch, though, working with it. Shot out front. That one didn't even make it towards the net. Yeah, it took a deflection there. 55 seconds left now. Monarch using their big body so far early in this one. Hudson to take advantage and take control of possession. That's where you need players like Nolan Sargent to step up. Another big body. Yeah, Monarch certainly outsizing the Raiders here. That one out of the zone now. The Raiders possessing it now. 35 seconds left to go here. A little miscommunication there with Yarrington. Here comes Monarch back in now. 22 seconds left. Trying to get one final push in before the second period concludes. Raiders trying to get it out of their zone, and they do. Here's an opportunity now for the Raiders. Just sent out wide there, five seconds left. The Raiders will let this period come to an end now, and so will Monarch as this thing hits double zeros here at Family Sports Center. Monarch coming back in this one. Unanswered goal here. Two unanswered goals now for Monarch to knock things up at one and then take the lead. Two to one now, entering the third period. We'll be back on the Raiders Sports Network next.
Welcome to the all NFL edition of Raider Sports Radio. I'm Hudson Ridley alongside Mark Schultz. And we are here to talk about the NFL. We will have an NFL podcast coming out weekly as well as an NBA podcast, um, which also covers the Nuggets and the Broncos. We are uh, from Denver, Colorado, so you will hear us talking a little bit more about the Nuggets and the Broncos for some more um, hometown fans, if you will. But without a do, let's just dive right in to the NFL. Big weekend with a big upset last week. Yes, the Tennessee sir. Titans beat yes, the Baltimore sir. Ravens in an absolute stunner. Derrick Henry gouging them in the run game. Ryan Tannehill making throws. Only seven of them completed when he had to. I mean, who needs to throw? Exactly. You got Derrick Henry. I mean, come on. 185 yeah. yards. Three, three games, games in, in a row. row. First player ever in postseason history. And the first player since 1971 to score a touchdown on his birthday in the postseason. Pretty I mean, cool. Just trucks through everybody. Yeah, there's no there's no real stopping Derrick Henry. I mean, he's absolutely insane. Derrick Henry is a tank. Mm-hmm. Derrick Henry is to say. Exactly. Derrick Henry is an absolute monster of a football player. There's no stopping him. I mean... Even defenses, defenses know that he's going to do this. He know, they know that he's going to gouge them for 150 plus yards per game, and they try to stop them. You saw Baltimore last game play um, a, with a six-man front, one middle linebacker, which is what a lot of teams have done to try to stop Derrick Henry. The Patriots did it last year to try to stop Todd Gurley. I mean, it seems pretty effective. But nevertheless, he <laughs> smashed right through the line. There's no stopping Derrick Henry. And when you have Ryan, a passer like Ryan Tannehill, I mean, during the regular season since he entered, he is the highest rated passer in the NFL with the worst offensive line rating in the NFL. Yeah. Now, he doesn't have to throw a lot of passes, but he, the passes that he does throw are, are accurate. Passes. They're good passes. Yeah. A lot of touchdowns, not a lot of interceptions. He's playing like a very good quarterback. How far do you see the Titans going? Do you think they could beat the Chiefs this weekend? I mean, I think we should talk about the Chiefs first. I mean. I think before we talk about uh, Titans Chiefs, I think we should talk about Chiefs. This is like this is like a Falcons blowing a 28-3 lead kind of thing with the Houston Texans. I mean, 24-0 lead in the first quarter. quarter. I mean... How do you how do you choke a game that hard? Especially when you're on fire by that much. And I think I think one of the main things was Kansas City got a lot of momentum back when they were able to stop them for just a field goal. They go up twenty four nothing, they get the ball back, drive down the field, score. Next mm-hmm. thing, get the ball right back, drive down the field, score. Mm-hmm. On the next one, muffed kickoff, Chiefs dive on it. Probably could have gotten up, gone to the end zone, nevertheless, Chiefs Working in the red zone, another touchdown to Travis Kelsey. I mean, an incredible comeback to make it a three-point game, and then they just never looked back. <coughs> Excuse me. Bit of a flu game today, like a Michael Jordan-type flu game I'm dealing with right now. But nevertheless, I mean, absolutely insane. 51-31 to 31 after trailing 24 nothing. The Chiefs with that quick strike ability on offense. The Titans' defense is hot. This is a matchup that you really want to see this weekend. And I know it may seem a little bandwagon-ish. But look, this is a good matchup for the Titans. The Chiefs' yeah. run D ranks one of the worst in the league. Mm-hmm. Against Derrick Henry? Ah, that's hard to stop. And I mean, the yeah. Chiefs have awful corners too. And Brian Tannehill, when he has to make throws, makes throws. How do you feel about this game? Who do you think? Um, I think it's going to be close, mm-hmm. first of all. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun game to watch. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to go with Kansas City. Mm. I, I know that I yeah. know that Kansas City's defense is, is not necessarily comparable. Subpar at best. For especially Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, the Chiefs' offense, it's offense versus offense. That's true. Yeah, I but don't think the Texans' defense is stepping up. I don't think it's good enough. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's good enough. I think the Chiefs... Houston's defense is good enough. Houston's defense has been stepping up, too. Houston's, Houston's not a bad defensive team. They just got rammed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we don't know what Kansas City's capable of. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, people th- talk about a quarterback throwing to his weapons. Mm-hmm. But... 
at what point is the Chiefs' entire running off or er, passing offense a weapon? Yeah, I mean, I mean Patrick it's, Mahomes, Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey. Like you can't forget about Michael Hardman. He's due mm-hmm. for a touchdown this week. Look out for him at a long return. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me against the Texans. I mean, Miko Hardman due to bust one open this week. Without, I mean, without a doubt, this is going to be an offensive shootout. Mm -hmm. I think the Titans D will have enough to hold them. The last time we saw them play, it was a close high scoring game with a game winning field goal for the Tennessee Titans. They won that game which most people didn't think they would. Big upset. Now coming in here, they weren't using Derrick Henry in that game. They were using more of a pastel Ryan Tannehill-focused offense. Now they're running the ball down people's throats with Derrick Henry. This is going to be an offensive shootout. A team that you know is going to run it, you can't stop the run, and a team that you know is going to go for big 50-yard chunk plays. Yeah, we just talked about, I mean, we just talked about who I who I thought would be winning this uh Mm-hmm. AFC Championship game, but I'm I'm thinking about it more. I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna go with the Titans. Did I persuade you with that one? It's not even that. It's that. <laughs> I mean, they shut down Lamar Jackson, the no. best quarterback in the league right now. Yeah, I mean, they you saw down. you saw those designed QB runs. If you watch the game on like third downs, where you try to bounce it to the outside, those middle linebackers, especially Correa, stepping up in a big way after being cut by the Ravens only two years prior, coming to the Tennessee yes, Titans, sir. stepping up in that middle linebacker spot, being a spy on Lamar Jackson, following him around the line. You saw it was a big fourth down play towards the end of the game that they needed. Correa comes around the edge as Lamar Jackson tries to cut him up and like stuffs him. It was absolutely insane. That defense could very well contain Patrick Mahomes, and you can't forget, they have a Dory Jackson at one corner, Logan Ryan at the other. You beat them, you got to worry about the safety deep covering uh, Travis Kelsey, excuse me. I mean, I mean, Kevin Byard is insane. He's an yeah, insane safety. And I think that they have enough mm-hmm. talent on defense. I, I, now I'm thinking about it, I do mm-hmm. think they have enough talent on defense to... Uh, Mm-hmm. To, to pick apart and ultimately destroy this Kansas City So our, our winner this week for the AFC Championship, we have the Tennessee Titans focusing now on the NFC, the Packers, the 49ers. We've seen this game before earlier in the year, and boy, was it a blowout. Absolute insane blowout for the 49ers. Do you see anything different this time, Marcus? I don't. Mm-hmm. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I mean, Green Bay, for being a third seed, probably the worst third seed team I've ever seen. Yeah, undoubtedly. San Francisco is going to, I think San Francisco is going to yeah. pick them apart and win this one. I mean, we saw last week the Packers kind of struggle with run defense, even against an older Marshawn Lynch. Let's take this back even further, okay? Because people are giving the Packers a lot of credit right now. Last week against the Seahawks, people were like, oh, well, the Seahawks almost beat the 49ers, and they did at one point beat the 49ers this year. There was a big difference between that game and the game where they played the Packers, and his name is Chris Carson. And Chris Carson was hurt for that game. And people don't understand, when Chris Carson is hurt, you know, I mean, the Packers' defense knew that they weren't going to run the ball a million times if the pass game wasn't going to work with Marshawn Lynch. He's too old for that. So that not only eliminates the run game, that eliminates the play-action game. So now you only have the pass game against the Packers, who have pretty solid corners. So you can't give the Packers too much credit in that matchup. They did what they had to do. They took care of it. They didn't get that first down at the end of the game. Way yeah. short on that play. So they're giving them way too much credit. And a San Francisco team who showed you last week their defense is the best in the league they stopped the run, they held the run, and they did not let anything go mm-hmm. with the run. Dalvin Cook was held to under 20 yards. I mean, that's absolutely insane. Dalvin Cook, one of the best weapons in the league, held under 20 yards. And then they just ran the ball down their throat. I don't see anything changing in this one. Our Super Bowl matchup as it stands right now, 49ers-Titans. titans did you picture this at the beginning of the year? Definitely not. I mean, I remember seeing. A, I remember uh, watching a quick little talk show on ESPN mm-hmm. about predictions for the 49ers. Mm-hmm. We watched somebody pick the 49ers. 13 and three. I saw. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I it's absolutely insane. They they had in that same uh, in that same podcast they had the Browns going fourteen and two, and I'm not sure about it, that one. Yeah, I mean, the Browns didn't even make kitchens. the playoffs. I don't care who the Browns have. How do you like that coaching hire though? Their, their yeah. new offensive coordinator from Minnesota, who only totaled, I think it was 179 yards against San Francisco's defense. I mean, come on. Not even 200 yards in an NFC Championship game with an offense that arguably has the most weapons, besides the Cleveland Browns, in the entire NFL. You're their offensive coordinator. You can only get 179 yards. It's absolutely pitiful. Nonetheless, he got that starting coaching job. And from that, we go to another member of the Browns that you may be seeing making the media runs. Odell Beckham Jr. has a warrant out for his arrest. I mean, Odell Beckham Jr. Yeah. is looking a little bit like a clown. Yeah. Right I, mean, I mean, if it was... An, okay, so here's the situation, I guess. Mm -hmm. LSU wins the national championship mm -hmm. for college football. LSU alum Odell Beckham Jr., that's the reason. Yeah, he's in, the he's in there partying in the locker room with all the players, having a good time. Mm -hmm. And and a police officer is talking with an LSU player. Mm -hmm. Seemingly trying to break up the party. It looked like this this yeah. player that he was talking to, I believe, was a freshman or sophomore. Uh, he was an fun. offensive lineman. Trying to have they some fun. The, I mean, they just won the national championship. Mm. But they're having a conversation, and Odell Beckham Jr., you can, there's a video of it. You just see him kind of looking at him and uh, yeah. giving the police officer a little love tap. A little on love the, tap on the, on the, uh, south on the old side. behind. <laughs> uh -huh. gives, um. him, gives him a little uh, smack. We didn't think much of it when we saw it. It was just I, I like a funny thing. I laughed personally. <laughs> I think it's kind of funny, but at the same time... The New Orleans Police Department did not take it the same way. Mm -hmm. You definitely don't smack a police officer on the butt. That's, yeah. I mean, you've got... Yeah. Kind of stupid. Um, yeah, no matter how much money you have, no matter what your fine. social standing is, and he'll be fine. What I most likely believe is going to happen, he'll be arrested, um, he'll be put in custody, but he'll get out on bail... Uh, big and, surprise. Yeah, big, big surprise. Big with all that money. Guys. They'll most yeah. likely hire the best lawyer possible. Um, and that'll probably get his charges dropped, most likely. So I I don't believe that Odell Beckham Jr. will receive Welcome back here on the Raiders Sports Network. 2-1 to one the score entering the third period at Family Sports Center Raiders. One goal deficit in Hudson. These are the types of games we live for as a Raiders fan. And these are the types of games the Raiders love as well. Only a one goal game. They're not new to this whatsoever. It's a game that the Raiders can win and they, they know they can win. Yeah, the Raiders have shown that they can be a comeback team. Let's see if they can do it here. So here we go, face off now, a second period that was dominated by Monarch after a first period dominated by the Raiders. So the third period, the deciding period, if you will, to come now. The Raiders controlling it to start here. Handled there by Stordahl. An early goal here would be huge for Raider momentum. Kept in along the boards for the Raiders. Opportunity now, nice shifty move there. Monarch, though, wins that one. See the speed there for number 18, Liam Keeley. But an icing call, so the lines will switch out and we'll come back to the Monarch zone. It's going to be a face-off here in the Monarch third. Raiders looking to tack one onto the board, even the score here. Monarch controls it on that face-off. Trying to get some numbers here. Entering the Raiders zone. Errant pass there. Won by Leighton Walsh. Walsh sends it back into the Monarch zone. Raiders Good pressure. pressure. That's Dylan Thompson there along the boards. Thompson, one of the juniors here. First year on varsity. Didn't play much last year. Was brought up for a, a few games here and there. But this year he's really made an impact. Both teams fighting for it now. Raiders trying to come up with it. And they will. It's Dylan Thompson. Thompson puts that one in front. Shot 
just wide of the net there. Looking for the one-timer, was not able to get it. Kyogen Neku thought he had that one. Another nice save there by Blackburn. Raiders were not able to control the rebound. Would have been huge had they done it. That one steered wide once again. Hudson, if you're the Raiders, you got to continue to test. Blackburn, one of the best goalies here in the state of Colorado. The more shots you take, the better chance you have. Keep getting smart shots on net. That one popped out along the boards and right out in front of the net, but nobody was home for the Raiders. So here comes the Yotes back the other way. That one nowhere near the net. Raiders going to switch out the line now. In comes Black back for the Raiders, along with Sargent. That one gets by Sargent. Holloway. Works it over. Here's Nolan Sargent. Hudson, I think Sargent could have took that one all the way had he not got stopped towards the end there. Yeah, I think he certainly could have. He's got the talent. He's got the skill. He's been a leading goal scorer before. Now in the Monarch zone here. Raiders fighting for it. See another opportunity here for the Raiders. Doing a good job of keeping it in the Monarch zone. 14 minutes, 17 seconds left to go here in this one. Blackback couldn't hang on to that one, and here comes Monarch. Shots, what a save there by Bussy. Taking a hard hit into the boards there, and they're going to call that. Appears to be a penalty there on the Raiders. And and going to the box here is the captain, Sergeant. They were able to play off one power play. Let's see if they can kill another one. Hudson, it's, it's the mere presence of of 26 for Monarch, Kevin Messias, just out there. Those one-on-ones, he has speed as well, the big guy out there. Sergeant's the only one that can combat him, and that time Sergeant got beat on that play, all he could do was commit the penalty. Yeah, strong, fast, athletic. That is a hard man to stop. So Monarch now on the power play for the third time tonight, but it's the Raiders with it shorthanded. Here comes Robbie Dembeck into the zone. Dembeck pushed along the boards, tries to get it to Yarrington, cannot. So here it comes, Monarch back the other way. Raiders doing a good job so far in this power play. They cannot allow another goal in this one. Working it back in is Monarch. That one hit a Raiders player, but now it will go out. Toby Yarrington there. So Monarch trying to slow it down a little bit now. Hudson trying to work the offense, if you will, and set something up here. So here's an opportunity now for Monarch. Pass out in front. Diving player for the Raiders was Leighton Walsh. Tried to stop that one. Back the other side. cross eyes pass. Save there. Bussy having to do everything he can now to keep the Raiders in this one. There's a shot. Steered wide there by Bussy. Nice low pad save there to tip it away. Bussy now got 50 seconds left in this power play to hold him. That one out in front. Raiders trying to clear it now. And they will. Off the referee though. Raiders unlucky. Uh, force of events there. 37 seconds left to go here. Clearing that one all the way down into the zone. That's going to help with the penalty kill as Monarch regroups here. Once again, no icing there as the Raiders are on the kill right now. 23 seconds left to go here. Raiders doing a good job so far on this power play. Shot. Another save there. Steered wide. Bussy doing a good job of getting that one away. Not allowing any rebounds there. Hudson, sometimes if you're a if you're a netminder, it's not enough just to save it, but you gotta be able to force it that they cannot get any rebounds on the other end. Bussy did a good job that time. Yeah, he certainly did, allowing his guys to get the rebound and not Monarch allowing the Raiders to clear it out of the zone. So the Raiders getting out of the power play, excuse me, unharmed now. As you see a stick out there and on the ice. Here come the Raiders trying to beat that one. No icing called. It's waved off. That one out of the zone. With it now for the Raiders is number 28, Jake Stordahl. Haven't seen much of him tonight. That one out in front. Stordahl comes up big on the defensive end. It was the mere presence of Gage Bussy there that prevented that one, Hudson. Yeah, he did. He got tall in net. Now here's a chance for the Raiders. Here's Caleb Blackbat bringing in there. Steered wide that time. Caleb Blackbat, one of the smaller players on that 
this Raiders team this year could not be physical enough down low that time. Still though, the Raiders with some nice chances here in the third period. Monarch having some as well. Here's another one. Nice well poked stop. away there. Shot score! A backhanded shot finds the back of the net there and extends the Monarch lead to two. Hudson, I did not see that coming and nor did the Raiders that time caught off guard on that shot. Yeah, I don't think Bussy saw that one coming. A little bit of what appeared to be a backhand wrister there just floating right above the of uh, the netminder there didn't look like he saw that one and once he did it was too late already in the back of the net little bit of a tricky shot to see there just a rooster there that trickles into the back of the net nothing you can do if you're bussy on that one and now the Raiders a two goal deficit Hudson I know several all these seniors I can say they haven't dealt with much defeat to say the least two goal deficits nonetheless Something that this team can still overcome. It's a team that battles back in. Look for them to answer quick here. Trying to answer back there, but it goes out of the zone. Raiders regrouping. Sergeant going to have to be one of those guys that leads this team. Should they get back into this one, he's in there right now. Along with Dylan Thompson. Thompson squares that back into the Monarchs zone. Opportunity out in front for Walsh. Poke check away. That one is going to go for an icing. It'll be a face-off in the Monarch third. So 10-16 left to go here. The Monarch third goal there was a nice one. It was scored by number 19 leading goal scorer Caleb Gold. That's his eighth of the season. And Hudson sometimes just great players making great plays, finds it back in the net there, and sometimes you get a little lucky. Yeah, that was certainly lucky that Bussy was not able to see that one. Bussy having great awareness that one just seemingly sneaking by him. Raiders keeping that one in the zone though. That one knocked down, but not stopped there, not smothered up there by the goalkeeper. Blackburn has been terrific all night long. Raiders gonna have to score on him twice to get back into this one. They're letting the players play tonight, Hudson. I must say, I mean, seven uh, penalty calls so far tonight, but for the most part, these players being physical as they will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they certainly have been playing a physical game. Only a couple of penalty calls thus far. Near offsides there. Sergeant now trying to regroup this Raiders offense here. Just mishandled there. What an open ice hit using all of that big frame. Sergeant nailing him. A line change though for the Raiders, so nobody home for that one. Raiders, not a whole lot of time, but plenty of time to get back in this one. Nine minutes and counting. Monarch, little cross ice pass, stolen away by the Raiders. Here comes Leighton Walsh. Monarch catches a break there. That would have been a two on one for the Raiders. Had that puck slowed down just a tad. Look at the speed there entering the Raiders zone. Well stopped there. Good opportunity for the Raiders here. Kyle Ganeku squares that one in and smothered up there by Blackburn. So eight minutes and 30 seconds left to go here at Family Sports Center on a, a cold night to say the least. Yes, we are indoors, but it's very cold, Hudson. <laughs> Every week I say this, I, I try and bring more layers each time, but I, I still end up just freezing my butt off. So I, I don't know, I'm going to have to bring in a fur coat or a parka or, or something next week. So, or even tomorrow. Tomorrow's our next broadcast. 5.40 against Castleview. Castleview, a team that the Raiders did beat uh, earlier in the season. 3 nothing was the final score in that one. So the Raiders trying to get their second win against Castleview. Monarch now working with it. Nice poke check there by the Raiders defense. Hudson, this Raiders defense giving up three goals tonight. you got to wonder if they're missing defenseman Tommy Miner, another big presence down low. Yeah, it sure seems like they are. He adds a lot of experience to that back defense. It looks like they're missing him thus far. They've had a couple of miscommunications. Another miscommunication there. You talked about it, but the Raiders come away with it. Trying to find Balat Bat. Balat Bat, one of a few amount of seniors this year, not too many. Last year was a, a big crop of seniors, 15 to be exact, here's Ogineku stepping in. That one cannot be kept in by Balat Bat. 
Well handled there by Ogineku. Ogineku loses it for a second. Sent in deep now. That was Hero Schmidt for the Raiders. We haven't called on his name much tonight, Hudson. Yeah, pretty quiet game. Nice defense there from Sergio Padilla. you're a Raiders fan tonight and you're just tuning in the Raiders have not been short on opportunities and chances four power plays tonight only one goal to show for them however that's Padilla huge hit along the boards Sergio Padilla applies one and then goes down himself opportunity for the Raiders now out in front what a save once again there shoulder pad save there by Blackburn that time the Raiders trying to narrow the lead here shot ricocheting off the body and the post. That was another powerful shot and another big time save there from Blackburn. Dylan Thompson walks in. Raiders still looking for that second goal. Here's a chance now for the Raiders out in front. That one didn't have a chance. Stordahl now keeps that one in for the Raiders. Monarch looking tired now with this line. Raiders, another opportunity behind the net now. It's Leighton Walsh, the Raiders' leading goal scorer with it now. Out in front oh. for Dylan Thompson. Cannot put that one home. Yeah, if, they're, if you're the Raiders, you have to get a stick on that opportunity. No one was there to do it. You got to have someone there. Still a chance, though, in the Monarch zone, tiring this Coyotes defense out. Leighton Walsh working with it, and the Coyotes finally get it out. They're going to decide to switch lines here. A smart thing to do. Five minutes and 39 seconds left to go here in the final period of action at Family Sports Center. Raiders trying to work back from a two-goal deficit. Dylan Thompson now remains in the game. You gotta wonder if the fatigue's gonna kick in for him. Monarch trying to clear it out of their own zone. Raiders keeping it in here thus far. A little struggle here. Monarch going to chip that one up and out of the zone. Raiders trying to regroup. Here's Sargent. No problem for Nolan Sargent. He stays composed back in that defensive front. Puts it right back in the Monarch zone. We have just hit the five-minute mark remaining in this game. Raiders have to stay focused in this one. Can't allow another goal, and you got to continue to put those shots on. Hudson, I was loving that power play line the Raiders had. They hadn't capitalized much, but it was the line with Sargent and Walsh leading it to go along with Blackbat. That was a huge shot there by Denbeck, and a fight breaking out in front of the netminder there. Ref having a word with a couple of players here, getting a little aggressive there after the whistle. Raiders electing to switch lines here. Raiders trying to get some sort of a spark here, and if it's a little fist fight, why not? Do something, get back in this thing. Haven't had a goal since the first period. The Raiders are scoring drought here at Family Sports Center, but the shots have been there all night long. The story of tonight has been netminder Ethan Blackburn. That one goes through the legs there of the Raiders forward. Sean Holloway banging a stick on the ice. He wants it. They give it to Blackbat though. Blackbat. Caleb Blatt bat now. Back to Holloway. Holloway. Back to Ogineku. Ogineku. Oh, it's deflected out in front. Two big saves there once again from Blackburn. Yeah, Blatt bat trying to get that to go. Just could not get it. Trying to poke at it off the deflection. Ogineku, a beautiful uh, pass, if you will, out in front and tried to redirect that one in. Did Caleb Blatt bat Could not do it after a beautiful, beautiful save there from Blackburn and Hudson. Sometimes those can be the toughest saves. Those uh, uh, redirects, if you will, those deflections on the way to the net. Nothing to do there if you're if you're a netminder, but a good save there from Blackburn. Yeah, it certainly is. He's been a rock solid all night long in the net. So three minutes and 30 seconds left to go here. Monarch looking to extend their lead in this one and put the Raiders away. That one a little scary sight there for Bussy. Almost snuck through that time. Bussy already unlucky on that second goal. Didn't see it, a backhanded goal there that was scored by number 16, excuse me, number 19, Caleb Gold for Monarch. Out in front there. Unable to, 
unable to work it into the middle there. That's where he was looking. Couldn't get it in. Dylan Thompson trying to bring it back in for the Raiders. It'll be a whistle and a face-off in the zone of the Coyotes, Coyotes, whatever you want to call them. Two minutes, 55 seconds remaining in regulation. This is once again a battle between two top ten teams. The Raiders checking in at number six and the Coyotes checking in at number three. A big game for both teams that can propel them potentially up the rankings. And Oh my goodness, Hudson, that looked like a big shot from Nolan Sargent deflected there by his own teammate. And we look down beneath us, Hudson, and who do we see? The Cherry Creek Bruins, another rival of the Raiders, giving them a tough time this year. Already one defeat and a tie against them this so far this year. The Raiders running out of time now, Hudson. they got to get something going in quick. Down two goals. Yeah, they certainly have to. Some say a two-goal lead is more dangerous than a one-goal lead. If they can get a little momentum back, look for them to tag at least one on here very soon. But they have to hurry. Monarch doing a good job of possessing it now. Just over two minutes left to go in this one. That one sent along the boards there. Raiders trying to win it back, but they cannot. Here comes Leighton Walsh with speed. Here comes Leighton Walsh, the Raiders' leading goal scorer. Pass in front. Dylan Thompson was there just wide that time but a beautiful selection there Nolan Sargent trying to catch him off guard he's got Leighton Walsh behind him beautiful passing for the Raiders and a sliding defensive stop for Monarch yeah a nice passing set up there unfortunately ruined by the defense a good stop that was what you wanted if you're a Raiders fan two straight opportunities there could not get one home and now just a minute and 30 seconds for the Raiders down two goals here at Family Sports Center they have okay. to tack one in right here. Very crucial that they do so. Here's a chance now for the Raiders. Back in the zone, and they pull the goalie out. So the Raiders a man advantage now, and here's Monarch. Shooting that one down the ice. That one's set wide and icing very close to a fourth goal there, Hudson. Yeah, certainly was. That would have been the one that would put it out of reach, but we have seen teams do it before. Blackhawks, 17 seconds, two goals. Uh, I've, I'm not mistaken, that was the 2013 Stanley Cup Finals. Correct. Let's see if the Raiders can pull some magic here. Stay tuned to this one as well. We'll have the post-game show for you. Win or lose, we'll be there. Ogunaku now, pass it off. Raiders trying to get something to go. Up a man here, 58 seconds left to go. Out in front, shot. Nobody home there for the Raiders. One timer was deflected wide there. Ogunekou now, nice move to beat the defender. Monarch now with it. Cannot clear it out. Beautiful move there, but cannot stay on his feet there as Padilla. 38 seconds left to go now, and Walsh with it. Leighton Walsh brings it in, out in front. Oh, just through the crease, unable to get a stick on it. Sent all the way down, and that's going to be another icing call. Face off now, going to take place in the Monarch half. For the Raiders, you had the look you wanted there. Andrew Gleason wide open in front of the net. Cannot put it up, put it home, and it's just it's just a fear now. It's, it's a nightmare now for the Raiders, Hudson. You haven't put a goal in since the first period, and it's just Ethan Blackburn down there in net. The presence of him all night long. Just been huge. This man, over 150 saves, and he's been just phenomenal tonight. The pure presence of a true goalkeeper. Yeah, he's protected his crease all night long. Great job by him. 15 seconds left to go here in this one. The Raiders need a miracle. Approaching 10 now. Monarch trying to ice this thing and end it. Raiders keep that one in, does Ogunekou, and that one will go out. That one iced with 2.5 seconds left, and Hudson, do you believe in miracles? Well, mathematically, this one's over. But, I mean, with a little bit of luck, Quick face-off win right here. A nice snipe from a defenseman. Leaves you with about .3 seconds. You win the face-off, shoot it right away at the net. Who knows? Maybe a lucky shot. Probably not. They're all going to put it up to 3.8 now on the clock. Will that be enough? That's going to be a no. So that'll do it here at Family Sports Center. The Raiders being knocked down by Monarch. It's a big game for Monarch. Three unanswered goals in the second and third period for Monarch to win this one here at Family Sports Center. Final score, 
three, Monarch one, Raiders. Thanks for tuning in with us on the Raiders Sports Network. We'll have the post game show with you in just a second. Stay with us. Welcome back here on the Raiders Sports Network. Hudson, a tough night for the Raiders tonight. A, a game you had to win, a game you really wanted to win, coming off of a 1-1 tie in overtime to Cherry Creek. They just didn't do enough for the Raiders. They had plenty of opportunities, plenty of chances for power plays, just couldn't put any in the back of the net, and you got to give credit tonight to Monarch and Ethan Blackburn. Yeah, they only had one goal on the power play. Ethan Blackburn minding his net tonight. I mean, keeping pucks out of the crease, covering them when they needed to be made. I remember it was about the uh, first period, tipped it up with his stick in the air so no one could get it, stood up and grabbed that out of the air. I've never seen that done before. That was a spectacular save. He was great all night. He is my player of the game. My personal player of the game. If, if we're picking favorites here, Hudson, my personal favorite of the game, William Laws, getting his first goal of his young Raiders career. Sophomore player, first season as a Raider on varsity team. Played a great game, got his first goal, uh, making it in light of, of, of a dark game, a, a, an unfortunate game if you're a Raiders fan. Mm -hmm. Well, with this one, the Raiders will fall to 5-3-1. and one. That one coming against Cherry Creek yesterday, but they do have a easier mashup, if you will, tomorrow. So looking ahead for this Raiders team, as Hudson mentioned it, tomorrow taking uh, advantage of Castleview, number 25 ranked. They've already beat them once this season. Then they'll take on Valor and Monarch, two teams ranked top 10. Hudson, they have chance of revenge against this Monarch team. They'll have one more time to do it, and it'll be in a couple weeks. Yeah, I mean, it sure will. This was a great game here, but hopefully the Raiders can capitalize the next time. From Jake Stewart, Hudson Ridley, Sophia Marcinek, Patrick Carlson, and Jack Fate, you have yourself a wonderful night.